Welcome to City Week, ladies and gentlemen. I am your host, Alton West. Today I'll have a guest on from Dash from LaGrange, and also I'll have a guest on from LaGrange College. So stay tuned for those interviews coming up in just a moment. Welcome to City Week, ladies and gentlemen. Today I have a community organizer sitting down with me from Dash. I have Ben Wheeler sitting. Ben, welcome to the show. Thank you. It's great to be back again. Well, it is a pleasure to always sit down with you and, and talk about all the things that are happening in and around the Hillside area. Mm -hmm. You know, each time I come over to my mom's house, I kind of see you out and about, yes. either walking with your family or your extended family, some of the neighborhood <laughs> kids. Yes. And I know that you do a wonderful job there. And Ben, I just want to say thank you for what you're doing and all the things that are taking place in the Hillside area. Well, thank you. It's great to uh, spend time with your uh, your mother at times and sitting on her front porch and hearing stories, you know, about her life and things like that, too. Well, very good. You know, talk a little bit about your role as a community organizer. Because sometimes when people think about community and organizing, how do those things come together? Talk a little bit about your role, if you don't mind. Yeah. So one of my the main goals of what I do at, uh, at DASH is work, walk along residents in Hillside. And by the way, I am, I'm also a resident, as we're talking about, mm -hmm. and f cultivate some of the ideas and some of the gifts that they have and bring them to the uh, bring them to the collective. A lot of times you have residents that might have that may have an interest and may not know that somebody down the street from them has the same interest. And so my goal is try to bring those people together in hopes of cultivating some you know new enterprises. Absolutely. You know, talking about that cultivating enterprises, I know that once upon a time you all had the community garden mm -hmm. in the area, and probably still have some facet of it there in the area. Uh, and, and then just to bringing together the kids and, and taking pride in the community. Correct. You know, I, I've seen you know the area really and truly kind of transform. Mm -hmm. You know, even with the planting of the trees, the yes. trash receptacles. You know, like I say, you and the kids walk in the streets. And it's, it's, that's the best neighborhood watch I think any community could have, where people get to know one another, mm -hmm. and then when they see something that looks out of place, they're right. not afraid to pick up the telephone and call. Right, exactly. And I think the other <coughs> thing too, but also being out and being present and being out, on the, being out in the neighborhood and things like that. Because it, it, if you, know, you talk about neighborhood watch and security, the best eyes are the people you know, walking around mm -hmm. and not behind a door or something like that. And so when, resident, when somebody walks, comes to our neighborhood, they're going to see kids playing basketball. They're going to see you know, f you know, folks sitting on the porch talking. They're going to see you know, uh, you know, s conversations happening. Uh -huh. And it's really hard to do something you know, malicious <laughs> in that kind of environment. That's right, absolutely. So, yeah. Well, you know, in, in talking about that, I know there's a number of things that you all have planned for the Hillside area. Yes. As we were talking before we came on, I just want to kind of take these in, in some sense of order here. Um, let's talk, I think, the 5K run. Correct. Talk yes. about that for us. So last year we hosted the, uh, the Hillside Art, Music, and Food Festival, which again is going to happen on April 16th this year. Um, and as a result of having a race organizer in our neighborhood and also a Kia employee in our neighborhood, uh, we are hosting a, the Kia Dash for Hillside 5K, which will start and end at both at the, at the festival um, on April the 16th. The race actually starts at 8 a.m. Um, the, the, the fun part about the festival, I mean about the race this year, not only is it the first time we've hosted it, but the race actually will uh, start in the, at, in the neighborhood and go to Hills and Dales and goes through the property and come back, um, back to the neighborhood. And so uh, families that participate uh, will have an opportunity to not only get a wonderful uh, microfiber t-shirt, but have the opportunity to win some uh, unique trophies. We're working with Kia, specifically Kia Motors, uh, manufacturing of Georgia, to design log I mean, uh, trophies that, have, that represent parts of their cars and things like that. So it's a, it's a fun event for the entire family. And then, of course, you can just stay along and be a part of the festival itself or have you know art, music, and food. OK, very good. Now, for the 5K run, is there an entry fee or anything? I heard the yes. t-shirt, OK? Yes, for the 5K, just the 5K, there is an entry fee. Um, it's uh, $20 as of right now. Uh, you can actually sign up at the uh, on Facebook on uh, Kia's Dash for, uh, for Hillside, if you just look that up on the uh, in the search menu. Uh, and through that, you can actually, uh, in, or the other one is tinyurl.com kia dash, um, forward slash kia dash. And I'm, 
I would direct more people to the Facebook page because that's the easier way to get to it. Okay. But right. just for the 5K, there is a, uh, an entry fee. Now, the, for the festival, it's completely uh, open for the public. All right. Well, very good. And that's the 5K that will be taking place on April 16th, right? April 16th, okay. 8 a.m. 8 a.m. All right. And it will actually run through the property of Hillvendale. Correct. And end back up at the starting point. Exactly. Okay. Well, yes. Yeah. Okay. All right. Very good. Let's talk. Well, talk a little bit about the Hillside Fest because that's the same day. Yes. As I understand, of the five day <laughs> run. So it's, full day there, right? It is going to be a full day. All it's right. going to be a full day that morning. Um, sometimes I'm like shaking my head, wonder why did we decide to do two <laughs> events on the same day? But uh, you but got no. a captive audience already in hand. Right? Exactly. Yep. Exactly. So uh, from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. Uh, we, we have Garfield Street between Jefferson and Lincoln will be completely closed off and we'll, well over 30 vendors have already signed up. Uh, we're expecting probably least, I've already, even last night I've received a couple more emails from different vendors. So we're talking at least 30 vendors in a range of art, music, and food, 505 Eats, uh, the visual art for the Alliance of LaGrange, which has about roughly about 30 participants in that. They will take over, they'll take three stalls with an array of different artwork involved with that. Uh, Annie Green will be there. So we have an array of different people from our community. We have five residents that are participating as vendors as well. So it's a pretty exciting day okay. uh, full of art and music and just really what what's makes LaGrange and Troop County great. Right. Um, so yeah. Very good. 30 vendors there. And, and the, I understand from what you told me earlier, the, the festival itself is free. Correct. Yes, yes. The festival is free. Definitely the vendors will be selling things. Mm -hmm. The food, 505 Eats, will be selling, you know, sandwiches and things like that because we don't want you to leave. We want you to stay and have mm -hmm. fun and see what great, what, how Hillside is really a great neighborhood. Okay, well, very good. So that's um, uh, on April the 16th as well, right after the 5K run. Correct. So there again, if you're out there, just go ahead and stay uh, and enjoy the afternoon. And mm -hmm. hopefully weather will be pr uh, yes. beautiful. Yes, last year we got, it was a little <laughs> sketchy, That's right. a little scared. It was about 90% the day before. Uh -huh. And then uh, everything seemed to part it. And so we, it would turn out to be a wonderful day. In fact, I think it was like an hour after where we got hit by a rainstorm. <laughs> <laughs> so we got really lucky last year. Same and thing. we're hoping for the same thing this year. Absolutely. You had to catch that wind. Exactly. That's it. All right, and, and then what, some of the other uh, things that you guys have going on, this is uh, an ongoing annual event mm -hmm. uh, that you all have been participating in for a number of years is Paint the Town. Correct. Talk about that for us if you don't mind, Ben. Sure. Paint the Town was started by uh, Frank Cox, which, which is a former um, dashboard member, mm -hmm. um, an active community organizer like himself, and felt like the need, he felt like residents should be working with residents on the needs within their own community. And, and he felt like one of the biggest issues is that there's a lot of, specifically a lot of seniors um, and low income families that, that are homeowners and that needed their homes to be painted. And so he worked with, uh, with Dash and worked in, we have, uh, we've always partnered with the, the Cox family and providing the service to the community. So this year we're, we're looking at between 15 to 17 homes primarily in the city of LaGrange. We're doing a couple outside of the city of LaGrange, but that's because of our rehabilitation program. But right now, the only, our main concern is the, uh, the city of LaGrange. We have just a couple more homes that we need. We have plenty of teams right now okay. uh, to sign up. And it's between May the 31st through June, June the 4th. Um, that whole week, once again, we hope for the weather. <laughs> That's right. We're cooperating, <laughs> right? Absolutely. Exactly. So f f f I heard you say you need a few more homes. Uh, I, I mean, what are the qualifications? Sure. For sure. The, the first thing is that we're looking for a homeowner. Okay. It has to be someone that you know owns their homes and not planning to sell their home within the next three years. The next thing we look for is somebody in the city of LaGrange uh, proper, like somebody that lives within the, in the city of LaGrange. Okay. Um, and then finally, the other thing that we look for is the 80% of medium income. So for a family of four, that'd be about less than $41,000 as that family needs to uh, make as a collective. So, okay. All right. Well, very yeah. good. And, you know, this is something that I, I remember, you know, participating in it and, you know, in the mm -hmm. past and, and, you know, just to see the joy that overcomes the homeowner when, you know, you have the volunteers come out there right. and they work right. to get the home looking nice. And then also you see the rippling effect sometime of that happening on a street where you have the volunteers come out and then maybe the next door neighbors say, oh, well, I'm going to paint my home as well. Exactly. You exactly. Know? Yeah. You definitely see that. You see a lot of where, um, uh, you know, residents begin to say, wow, if that person can get it done, 
maybe I can try to do some something small. That's right. Um, and you also see this really other side of this cool story is that we have a lot of like teams that build a relationship with a homeowner. And it becomes almost like uh, they check in on each other and they talk with each other on an ongoing basis. And it becomes more than just a, you know, this, uh, this volunteer group come to help. It's really like a new relationship begins to take place. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And it's just a really fun opportunity. Uh, we have Caterpillar is a big part of it, American Home Shield, Interface, First Pres, Twin Cedars, Saywan. So in a group of just not only from the private sector, but also from churches and different groups throughout the community take part. It's Very worthwhile calls in our community. Exactly. Let me ask you, do you know approximately, not to put you on the spot, how many homes have you all done over the course of time? Sure. Last year was not only our 10 year anniversary, but we also painted well over 150 homes as of last year. So we're getting close to 175 this year. Oh, wow. That's excellent. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. All right, as we get ready to close out, I understand that you all have a, a new grant Mm -hmm. that um, you all were just awarded, and this is a mouthful, yes. it's the Georgia Council for Development Disabilities? Correct. Okay. Talk a little bit about that, if you don't mind. Sure. So the Georgia Council on Developmental D uh, Disabilities, or GCDD, is a okay. <laughs> shorter way to say <laughs> it. Name, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> um, they have been working with communities across the state of Georgia, in Clarkston, in Savannah, um, in Macon, and been working with these communities and they call them real communities. And what they really do is they, they, they provide funding to work along community organizations to uh, hear what that, what that group can do to encourage, uh, empower the residents to uh, give voice to what they might need or they feel like is, an, is a, uh, a resource. And so what we're gonna be doing in Hillside is that we're gonna uh, hire seven residents to go about listening to their fellow residents, 425 households within the year of 2016 and 17, to ask the questions about what are they good at? What are the resources that they might be able to bring to the table as a collective? And hopes of starting the next enterprise, it might be the next festival, or it might be the next yoga class that we already, you know, one of the residents started. It might be something like Pure Life Studios. Um, you know, what, whatever that next thing is that could help possibly encourage more um, relationships and going back to what we initially talked about about people getting out one of the best ways is by starting a conversation, conversation. Absolutely. and just asking a question absolutely you know finding out how did this person end up here where did they come from and their stories and things like that well very good yeah. definitely would love to have you come back on Ben and sure. talk more about that and the success of that mm -hmm. and again I just want everybody to keep in mind the number of activities <laughs> that they have going on in the hillside area can't say that you're bored go nope. over to the hillside area yeah. Ben is always a pleasure to sit down with you and I definitely wish that the weather cooperates and that the community will come out and enjoy all of the things that you all have planned for them okay sure all thank right. you thank right. you very much appreciate it ladies and gentlemen stay tuned for more City Week in just a moment City Week, ladies and gentlemen. Now I'm sitting down with the admissions counselor from LaGrange College, Lisa Gant. Lisa, welcome to the show. Thank you. Well, Lisa, now I think I know that this is the first time that I had you on this show and you uh, work you worked there for LaGrange College. So tell me a little bit about Lisa Gant, if you don't mind. Okay. Um, well, I'm from Atlanta, Georgia. Um, I originally worked at a different school before LaGrange. I've been doing admissions for um, three plus years. Um, I love LaGrange. It's a great school. Everyone's very welcoming. The students are great. It's just been a great transition for me to switch over to LaGrange College. Okay, well very good. From Atlanta, Georgia. Mm -hmm. Now I gotta ask the question. Coming from Atlanta, coming down to LaGrange, a little bit smaller metropolitan. Yeah. How do you like LaGrange? Um, 
Actually, I like it a lot better. Uh -huh. um, I actually lived in Kansas in middle school, um, which was very, you know, slower pace. So I kind of like, you know, the slow, slower pace atmosphere. Atlanta gets too busy sometimes, but I do love my city and LaGrange is, is a great fit for me. Okay, well, very good. Well, welcome to our city. And you've been here now about... Uh, three years. Three years. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, very good. Well, mm -hmm. welcome to our community. Thank you. Now, you the, you are the admissions counselor there at LaGrange College. Talk a little bit about your role there, if you don't mind. Okay. Um, I work with the music students, um, art and design students, business students, um, English, and um, theater majors. All those students that come into the admissions funnel when they're interested in those majors. So I work with them to help them get their um, documents in, um, work with orientations, preview days of course, um, and help those students that are interested in auditioning for um, scholarships, for um, departmental award scholarships for music and fine arts. So that's my role pretty much um, and I love it. Okay, well very good. Now you were saying, I heard you mention art and music data and some of those curriculums there. Are, are you musically inclined yourself? <laughs> yes, I, I am. You play the piano, don't you? I am actually, I play the piano somewhat, play some chords. Uh -huh. um, I just bought an acoustic guitar, oh. so I'm learning how to play that. I actually um, am a interpretive dancer, so I do that at my church, um, and I write too, so yeah, I am artistically okay, inclined. Okay, very, yeah. very good, very <laughs> good. You just have that aura look like a piano player <laughs> there for some reason. I'm getting there. You're getting there, <laughs> okay, well, very good. Let me ask you, when, uh, when students come, because we're going to lead up and talking about preview day here in a moment, when students come to you, what seems to be maybe one of their biggest fears? Um, I think it's just figuring out what they're going to do for the next four years of their life, making sure they've made the right choice. Um, for example, myself, I switched my major like three times um, in college, uh -huh. so I can relate to those students. Um, so they're just trying to figure out what's the next big step for them and who can help them. And us as admission counselors are the first people that they talk to. So it's a great position to fill for their lives. Okay. Because I know most of them, like I say, they come to you, they may be a little nervous. And some of them probably haven't made the decision that they really and truly want to go to college. Right. And like you say, they probably want to change their major or, or some of their friends will get them and say, why don't you do this? And, you know, and they're like, okay, I'll try that too. Right. So, so we're glad to you know, have someone like yourself to take that fear out of, out of the, making that initial step. Um, so today we're going to be talking a little bit about preview day, which I know the LaGrange College always love to have these days where they open up the campus. And this year is going to be March the 19th. Talk a little bit about that for us. Okay. This is our last preview day. Um, it's our last spring preview day. It's on <coughs> March 19th. It's an opportunity for students to come and visit the campus. They get to um, go on tours, meet professors, and go to different breakout sessions. Um, they can go to a financial aid admissions breakout session. They can go to one to learn about athletics. Um, they can go to one to learn about alumni. Um, they can go to just a lot of different breakout sessions. So it's an opportunity for them to just encounter the atmosphere for a day. Um, we also have um, new additions to the campus. Um, we have a new nursing and music um, building it's, um, called Westside. Mm -hmm. So the students at this preview day are the first to get to preview it. So that's a great opportunity for them. So it's a lot of great um, just things for them to get involved in at this preview day. Okay, well, very good. I want to come back to that um, the, the new campus uh, uh, building there that you all have recently, I think, uh, finished the construction on there. Now, I, I know that normally in the past, this has been open to uh, students, sophomores, through their senior years, mm -hmm. but there's a lot of times families actually turn out to these events. Yeah. Talk about that for us, if you don't mind. Yeah. Um, Families, they'll bring all their their kids with them just so they can get an idea of what college is like early, which is a great thing. And then even we have some transfer students that come to visit the campus as well. So it is open for sophomores, juniors, and seniors, even freshmen. And when we go out on the road and recruit, we um, want all students to come to pre day because it's never too early to start figuring out where you want to go. So, Absolutely. Yeah. You know, you're talking about never too early to kind of get out there and get your feet wet and kind of exploring in various things. Now, not only will they get opportunity to come and, and hear about the admissions, the financial aid opportunities, and to meet a professor in the various areas of, of study, and the professors will be there. Talk a little bit about that, if, you know, as far as, like, in your experience, 
how that made you feel a bit more comfortable about making the selection for the career you chose. Yeah, uh, meeting a professor means a lot to the students. It can be kind of nerve-wracking at first because it's a professor, <laughs> um, but it's good to, to get that opportunity to meet them and see and um, learn what it is that you, you'll be learning your four years at um, any college. So it is a great opportunity for the students to meet professors. Um, and they can go to several different professors if they're not sure, like especially for the undecided students, I would encourage them to go and like meet as many professors as possible so they can just get an idea of what they want to do and just figure all that out. So it is a, a privilege to, you know, get to sit and talk with the professors. You don't get to do that at every school, so it's great. Absolutely. You know, in talking about that, I, I went to a smaller school where you had a smaller class size, so when your seat was empty, the teacher knew that you were not there mm -hmm. and they would call or uh, make sure that they found out why you were not there. Talk about that experience in, in attending a smaller university as opposed to a larger one for some students. Well, yeah, um, and I can testify to that too because I did go to a smaller institution as uh -huh. well. I think it's great. I mean, I think it's good to have hands-on attention and for the professors to know your name and not to just to be a number. Um, it's kind of hard for some students to learn in bigger environments and it's easier for some students to learn in smaller. So it's kind of depending on what type of student you are, but I think it's great to get that one-on-one -on -one attention because you need it. And then to have the connections even after you graduate they'll still know you and they'll still reach out to you and make sure that you're going um, the right direction in your career path. So it's it's great to go to a smaller school. So it kind of works to the positive and negative. Yeah. It doesn't, absolutely. Yeah. When that chair is empty, they know, okay, yeah. Alton's not there today, right? Yeah. <laughs> absolutely. You know, and, and to talk about to be able to go around and to meet the various, you know, department chairs and, and the professors and things of that nature can only just kind of really help you to refine and, and to really solidify your decision to, um, to go in a particular area of study. And you also, I understand there are going to be some auditions that will be uh, made available that day as well as some art scholarships. Talk yes. about that. Yes. Um, well, I've been working with the art and uh, art design students, all the fine art students, to help them prepare for when they audition. And March 19th has been the date for the art por portfolio day for, you know, okay. this that we've been planning. So excited about all those students coming on campus and getting that chance to audition for that and then show their portfolio for um, the art and design program. So it is a great chance for the students and the professors already know who's coming so it's already pretty much set in stone. Um, okay. But it's also a great opportunity for those students who haven't quite you know, decided that LaGrange is their choice. They get to meet those professors and get an idea what the portfolio may include, what the audition may look like. So it's still a great chance for those students who haven't um, committed to coming to audition and showing their portfolio that day. So. Okay. Well, th if there's a student or a family member that's listening now, Lisa, and they wanted to reach out and connect with you or just you know, the college, give them the website address that they need to, to go on. Yeah, they would go to lagrange.edu, and once you get to the home page, it's pretty easy to figure out where you want to go. If you want to go to admissions, go to financial aid, you can go there. If you go to admissions, you'll find the preview day option to um, register for preview day. Okay, well, very good. And as we get ready to wrap up, we've got a couple of things I want to talk about. I know that there's a new course that LaGrange College is offering. Yes. And I'm going to see if I can get this one out correctly. Creative Video Digital Media. Yeah, Creative okay. Digital Media. Okay, <laughs> yeah. all right. Um, it's one of our um, newer majors um, that has been put out um, it, and it's still in progress as well. Um, it's for those students that are interested in like the film industry because Atlanta is becoming a big um, part of the film industry. Everything's pretty much filmed there. Mm -hmm. um, so it is a great um, addition to our majors. Um, in addition to that, at the West Side, new West Side building, we do have um, designated classroom space for those students as well as a recording studio. Um, that's just one half of the bill and the other half is for our nursing majors. So it's a great um, major that's added and I'm excited to see all the students that come because on the road we get those questions about if we have a film major or if we have a mass communi communication major. So now we do have something like that. So it's great to promote it and get more students down to LaGrange. So. Absolutely. And so this would be offered during the spring of this year, correct? 
I'm not quite sure. Okay. I'm not right. quite sure, um, but okay. it is right. something that is in the works and that they're working on. Okay, well, yeah. very good. Now, when you, you've alluded to the West Side Campus, and I know that most of the, the community have seen the transformation that perhaps have taken place there at the West Side Campus. And from what I understand, you basically, you all have like a, a small hospital setting set up there. Yes. And, uh, the gymnasium been converted to a, a concert hall. Mm -hmm. Talk a little bit about that. Yeah, um, we actually got to see the grand open. I think it was like two, two or three weeks ago um, and they do have surgical beds um, they do have a place for the students to get that hands-on um, attention that they need to practice um, they have the the dummies that are in the nurse in in the beds and I felt one and it had a pulse and everything so they have a lot of uh, great additions and I think it's I think it's amazing and then the concert hall was great they actually did um, a small concert at the grand opening so it's just a lot of great great things um, in that building and I'm excited to see the students that are coming in, in the fall and then the ones that are already here mm -hmm. um, they love it um, the music students especially love all the different practice rooms they have and then the recording studio um, so it's a lot a lot of great things happening at LaGrange well very good and again if you don't mind tell them a preview day date and from time to time if you don't mind okay um, preview day um, is March 19th um, we get there at 8. Um, everything starts up, I believe, at like 9 or 9.30. Um, and it's pretty much going on um, until after 1. Um, students get to go on tour. They get to go to different breakout sessions um, and just enjoy the campus and um, see the new West Side building. Um, so, so, yeah. Okay. Well, very good. And I'm sure that the, as in the past, the students and the families will all come out, take a you know tour of the new campus, uh, the West Side, because I'm interested in doing that myself. Mm -hmm. uh, having been in the building when it was the classroom set up, we would love to see the hospital there and everything. Yeah. So very good. I'm, I'm so students. Family, parents, come on out. Preview day, March the 19th, up on the hill, as we call yes. and refer to it as here. Uh, so, Lisa, I want to thank you very much for coming on the show today and, and sharing this information. I know that the, um, the students will come out and thoroughly enjoy all that LaGrange College offers and being a part of our community. So, thank you very much. Thank you. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, stay tuned for more City Week in just a moment. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us City Week this week. My guests have been from Dashville LaGrange, community organizer Ben Wheeler, as he talked about the number of events coming up in the Hillside area, and more particularly on April the 16th, the 5K run, as well as the Hillside Festival. So come on out, enjoy those events taking place there in the Hillside community. Also, I had on from LaGrange College, the admissions counselor, Lisa Gant, as she talked about preview day that's gonna be taking place March the 19th, starting about nine o'clock up on the hill. So students, families, come on out, enjoy preview day, and who knows, you might just end up at LaGrange College. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope that you've enjoyed those interviews, and as always, I wanna invite you back for more of City Week. Mm -hmm.